Hello and welcome to Baichu's IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Consider the following statements. The Khilafat movement was launched under the leadership of Ali brothers. Treaty of Versailles was a treaty signed between the allies of World War I and the Ottoman Empire. Which of the above statements is or correct? The answer to this is one only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of the Khilafat movement. What is this Khilafat movement? During the First World War, Turkey was one of the central powers. It had fought against the British. So what happens? They were the central powers. They had fought against the British. During this process, Turkey lost the war. Turkey was defeated and the Ottoman Caliphate was proposed to be dissolved. Muslims around the world had regarded, respected, revered Sultan of Turkey as their caliph. Who is a caliph? A caliph is the religious head of the Muslims. So the Khilafat movement was launched under the leadership of the Ali brothers which included Maulana Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Shaukat Ali. It also included Maulana Azad, Hakim Ajmal Khan as well as Hazrat Mohani as well. They went against the British with the support of Mahatma Gandhi to persuade the British government not to abolish the caliphate. When you look into the second statement, it is not Treaty of Versailles, but instead it is Treaty of Severus. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following is are the applications of Doppler radar? Radiology and healthcare, weather forecasting, submarines, aviation. The answer to this is 1, 2 and 4 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of RADAR. What does RADAR stand for? It stands for radio detection and ranging. This happens to make use of the electromagnetic waves to detect and locate the objects. So when we look into the applications, yes, it can be used in radiology and healthcare. It can be used for weather forecasting, but this is not used in submarine. But in submarine, we have another concept where we have the sonar coming into picture and it is not radar. So when it comes to submarines, we make use of one of the technology called a sound navigation and ranging which uses sound to see objects instead of radio waves. As a result, the third option is wrong. So the answer to this would be 1, 2 and 4 only. It is again used in aviation as well. So this would be 1, 2 and 4. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statements. He founded the Swadeshi Steam Navigation Company in 1906 to compete against the monopoly of the British India Steam Navigation Company. He was a great believer in the Swadeshi movement. He is sometimes called Kapalothiya Tamilan. The above statements best describe Subramanya Bharati, Chidambaram Pillai, Rajagopal Chari, E. V. Ramaswamy. The answer to this is Chidambaram Pillai. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of Chidambaram Pillai. There are some important factual data that we have to remember from the preliminary examination point of view. He was born in the year 1872 where in the state of Tamil Nadu in 1894 he went to Tiruchurapalli to pursue law. He was also close friends with great poet Subramanya Bharati and he also shared similar political ideologies as well. He was a follower of Bala Gangadhar Tilak and he was also a great believer in the Swadeshi movement. In 1906, he established the Indian shipping company called as the Swadeshi Steam Navigation Company. Why? Because the British had the monopoly when it comes to the shipping business in order to oppose them, in order to develop India, he comes up with the establishment of the Swadeshi Steam Navigation Company. Along with the fiery speaker Subramanya Shiva, he also started the Swadeshi Sangam. These are some of the important points from the preliminary examination point of view. So do remember these important facts. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following statements is are incorrect? The University Education Commission was set up in 1948 under the chairmanship of Dr. Radha Krishnan. It recommended the establishment of the University Grants Commission along similar lines to the University Grants Committee of the United Kingdom. Which of the statements are incorrect? Since it is asking for the incorrect statement, the answer to this is none. Why? 
because both the statements given here are correct. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here makes a mention of Dr. Sarve Palli Radhakrishnan. Let us discuss some of the key important factual data with respect to Sarve Palli Radhakrishnan. His birth anniversary is celebrated in India every year as Teacher's Day since it was first proclaimed in the year 1962. He was a scholar on both Hindu and the Western philosophy and he was deeply influenced by Swami Vivekananda. That is why he was hailed by the scholars both from the East as well as the West as a living example of a bridge between both the civilization. Radhakrishnan started his career as a teacher in the Department of Philosophy at MCC. After that, he also taught at the Maharaja College in Mysore. He was appointed to the King George V, Chair of Mental and Moral Sciences at the University of Kolkata in 1921. He even lectured at the Oxford University as well. He also served as the Vice Chancellor of the Andhra University and the Banaras Hindu University. Radhakrishnan was internationally renowned academician and he embarked also on the political career. After independence, he represented India at UNESCO and was also member of the Constituent Assembly. He also served as an ambassador to Soviet Union. In 1952, he was elected as the country's first vice president. He also became the second president of India in 1962 and remained in office till 1967. These are some of the important factual data that you have to remember with respect to Sarve Palli Radha Krishnan. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following is are the function or functions of the cabinet secretariat preparation of agenda for cabinet meetings secretarial assistant to cabinet committees allocation of financial resources to the ministries select the correct answer using the code given below the answer to this is one and two only this happens to be a previous year question from the year 2014 so the cabinet secretariat is responsible for the administration of government of india Transaction of Business Rules of 1961 and the Government of India Allocation of Business Rules of 1961. Why? That is because there are different ministries that are present in the Union Government. There are also departments as well. They have to coordinate between the ministries and the departments. Who takes up this responsibility? It is the Cabinet Secretariat. There would be differences between ministries and departments. One would want to assert themselves. The other would not want to give certain things to the other departments and the ministries. So who will sort out the difference? It is the cabinet secretariat. So the cabinet secretariat will provide all the secretarial assistance to the cabinet members, to its committees and also helps the government in major decision making by providing all the important inputs as well. So the iron out the differences, give the inputs to the cabinet and its committee and ultimately they help in settling all the differences between inter-departments and inter-ministers. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is Nipah virus. What is this Nipah virus? This happens to be a zoonotic virus. What is a zoonotic virus? This is a virus which is usually transmitted from the animals to the human beings and it can also be transmitted through the contaminated food or directly between the people. When you go back to the history book, the very first time when this particular virus was recognized was back in the year 1999. Where was it identified? It was identified in Malaysia. So one of the villages in Malaysia is called as Nipah and as a result what we have is the Nipah virus. So the first time it was recognized was in 1999 during an outbreak among the pig farmers in Malaysia. How does the Nipah virus spread or get transmitted? The disease spreads to the fruit bats which are also called as flying foxes and they are the natural reservoirs of the Nipah virus as well as the Hendra viruses. So do remember the natural reservoir for these Nipah viruses and the Hendra viruses happens to be the fruit bats or the flying foxes. The virus is usually present in the bat urine. It is present in the saliva and the birthing fluids of all these bats. What are the symptoms of the Nipah virus? People who have been infected by this Nipah virus are marked by fever, headache, drowsiness, disorientation, mental confusion and they also can go up to coma and this can also lead to potential death as well. As of now, there is no specific treatment for the Nipah virus and those who are infected by this virus are treated in the intensive support care. 
it is this that we have to understand in reference to the Nipah virus. So, that is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.